All right, we'll do. Let's do this video here. Explosive Jordan Peterson on trans rights. Elliot Page controversy. All right, Kyle Kalinsky secular talk. I think this is a clip from like his private podcast. So that's cool. Oh, there's a lot of details here. Hey, let's get going. Uh, so I noticed just the other day you were banned from Twitter. Now, you know, I'm somebody, nobody can argue against my lefty credit. It's funny because he wasn't actually banned from Twitter. He just refused to take down like an insensitive tweet. Everybody knows I'm, I'm a man of the left. Having said uh, that, my... You know, we should we should check out the tweet real quick. Um, Let's see if we can find the tweet uh, specifically. I think it's right here. Oh, let's keep watching this. My solution... Before. On this issue of social media censorship has always been look we need to expand first amendment protections and the way you do that is to regulate these big social media companies like their public utilities so if you do that then you you know here here it is here's like a picture of it so it says over here uh it was elliot page she had excuse me elliot page he had sorry <laughs> it was in, unintentional completely unintentional my bad elliot page basically the article was like oh i'm proud to be like trans on the new show what the show what's the show called i watch it all the time what's the show called i watch it i like the show why can't i think of the show why is it that i can't think of the show somebody tell me the show right now tell me the name of the show right now i swear to god you better say it to me right now it's some show on netflix umbrella academy thank you juno very good thank you and then uh see this is the thing is like i interpreted it incorrectly a lot of people i think did as well i think that's why you got the ban but it said remember when pride was a sin now, I thought that he was referring to pride as like, you know, the LGBTQ pride. Uh, I was wrong, though. He was specifically saying, remember, when like pride is one of the seven deadly sins. Now, it's weird because I bet if some guy was like, oh, I am proud to be a good dad, you wouldn't be like, oh, I remember when pride was a sin. It's you shouldn't be pride. to <laughs> You should you shouldn't be proud to be a good father. It's very normal. You know, something like that. Did I do the voice? All right. I feel like I kind of I feel like I kind of nailed it. No, not a good. So I feel like he's uh yeah, sure. All right, fuck you. I sound like Ethan. Fuck, that's not good. Um <laughs> So I feel like there was a double standard there. Um I really like El Elliot Page. I think they're pretty fun. I think they're fine. They don't they're not like in your face about anything. They're not like constantly like, "Oh, here's my experience." Like they they were like, "It's hey, I'm trans and that's it." Like there's nothing crazy going on there. They're just like a normal trans person. Some people nowadays are just crazy in general. Anyway, uh, then it says, and Ellen, okay, so remember when pride was a sin? And Ellen Page just had her breasts removed by criminal physician. Okay, I can't do this. Uh, then reference that he, that, that uh, Ellen, Ellie got uh, their, their breasts removed by a criminal physician. It was legal. I don't know what to tell you. You know, I get the conversation about kids transitioning. It takes total sense, you know, but like this is a grown adult. It's like 35. L, L, Ellen, Elliot, Elliot is 35 years old. Like, okay, like the grown adult got their breasts removed. I don't care. Like, would you be saying the same thing if somebody like got their breasts enhanced? You know what I'm saying? Like, but they weren't trans. They just wanted big boobies. You probably wouldn't care. So they removed it. I don't know. I mean, I personally think it was because they interpreted the pride thing wrong. But either way, insensitive tweet. Maybe it was the misgendering. I don't know. Or the miss. Yeah, the, the dead naming. I don't know. Whatever. You got bans. Private platform. It is what it is. Um, but they what he wasn't banned. All he had to do was delete the tweet and he just refused to do it. That's it. <laughs> so it's not like he got banned. He's like, I refuse to do this. Um, okay. Basically, you're saying this is the new public square and people can speak their mind here. Now that doesn't mean of course you can't, you know, dox people or do direct threats of violence or anything like anything that's actually illegal will remain illegal. But outside <laughs> of that, you can't censor people just based on um kidding. political opinion. So, you know, I definitely wouldn't have banned you, suspended you, etc. But I do have a question about that specific tweet that did get you in trouble because, you know, you said something to the effect of... Um, well, I don't know if it got me in trouble. You know, I don't think I'm in trouble. Twitter banned me, but I don't consider well, that trouble. That okay, well, you know what he means, Jordan. Come on. Relax. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair point. Um, Relax, Jordan. Take it easy, brother. Deep breath. But you said something to the effect of, remember when pride was a sin and... Um, mm -hmm. Uh, the criminal physician. And Ellen Page just had her breasts cut off by a criminal physician. The criminal physician, exactly. So my question is, yeah. is the physician really criminal? If you agree that adults can decide to transition, then why would the physician be criminal? Don't adults have that right if they want to transition? Yeah, Jordan. Good question. Good question. Not everything legal isn't criminal. Okay. 
well, why do you think it's criminal then? <laughs> and do they have that right? That's true. Capitalism should be illegal. All right. Profits should be criminalized, guys. <laughs> you know, it should be a crime. Getting massive bailouts and then engaging in stock buybacks. But, you know, <laughs> who the fuck am I, right? See, I would have left Ellen Page alone if she hadn't been parading her new abs in a fashion magazine. Ah. Oh. I would have, I would have left Ellen Page alone if she just shut the fuck up. Well, come on, dude, that's so weird. You're making it seem like Ellen was like a Elliot. Fuck, I'm I'm dead naming on accident. Elliot, leave Elliot alone. Like I said, they're pretty cool. Stop, like well, they <laughs> It's so shitty. It's just so shitty. The person's like, hey, I'm happy to be who I am. You're like, oh yeah, I disagree. That's like, come on, bro, chill the fuck out, dude. What are you doing, Jordan? It's like it's it's El Elliot's fault for saying that they're happy to be a person. <laughs> uh, How many kids do you think she can convince to convert? Probably like none. How many people do you think don't care? Look, I see Ellie Page there. I don't give a shit. I just don't give a fuck. I'm like, okay, I want to watch the movie, the show, Umbrella Academy. That's all I care about. It's a good show. How many people do you think were convinced to change? They're entire none. Listen, there's a conversation to have about like there are some people I think who are young people, especially who are misdiagnosing themselves as trans, um, and maybe they're experimenting with their with their gender. They're misdiagnosing themselves with trans. They probably have other issues. If you talk to detransitioners, they, they're like, I had chronic anxiety and depression, um, and then I I diagnosed myself with, like with gender dysphoria, and then I went to a doctor, and they overly affirm me, and that's a conversation to have. We shouldn't be doing that. But like Ellie, Elliot being like, "Yeah, I'm happy now." Oh shit! Fucking, they're ha they're happy now, and all of a sudden we have to have like a meltdown. You know, people might have been inspired, but like you know, you could argue that there are people inspired to feel comfortable in their own bodies because of Elliot. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, the the uh, the the failure of of some people in the like medical industry isn't the fault of Elliot Page for being happy. Elliot grew up in a time where like people weren't super affirming, so I'm pretty sure it's a genuine experience that they're having, you know? One? Yeah. Thousand? No, not See, yeah. I, no, no, really? I want to I want to respond to that. I yeah. think that with the trans community, it's very similar to the gay community, where back when that first became a big issue, people thought, oh, if we talk about it, if it's in magazines or whatever, we're promoting kids to go down that path. But really what happened is people are who they are. That, and if they're gay, they happened. just decided to be no. like, Yeah, I'm gay, and they were just more open and honest no. with themselves. People are who they are. No, no, fuck you. I want to hear what he says. Promoting but. people to do that. No, that's just not saying, what happened. If you You're are that, it's okay. Wrong. What? I feel that's like a really reasonable interpretation. Like, hey, there are people who they are who they are, and Elliot's just like, hey, this is me. And then some other people feel comfortable saying that that's them too. Nope, you're completely wrong. Now, listen, there is some pushback. I already, I already gave like a little bit of an example before, but like, it doesn't mean he's completely wrong. <laughs> like, it's not like he's, he's, he's mostly right. I would agree. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're I'm, utterly I'm, I'm wrong. Listening. There's I'm nothing listening. about that that's right. So what is it I right? There's been an absolute look. One of the reasons that I opposed What's... Bill C-16 in Canada to begin with, this pronoun compelled speech bill, was because I knew perfectly well what was going to happen when we introduced confusion about gender identity into the public sphere. What's that? Now, the argument was that if we left people with gender dysphoria alone to make their own way and stop torturing them, what? that we would decrease the mental health load on those individuals. And my analysis as a clinician was that for every one person of that sort that we hypothetically saved, we do them uh, a thousand more. That there's a, there's just no way that you came to. There's no actual reasonable metric that you came to. I guarantee you, people are being misdiagnosed and mistreated. Hundred percent. I'm not saying that that doesn't happen, but you're saying that the the the, the that the rate is like a tenth of a percent. Like there's you there's no way. There's just no way you have any factual foundation on that. Uh, guys, uh, appeal to authority. Appeal to authority. He says he says he's a clinician. Come on, dude. This is so dishonest. I think the conversation about detransitioners and correctly uh, diagnosing people is super important, but this is like this is assassinating the conversation. As a consequence of confusion and then social contagion, I knew the literature on psychogenic epidemics. They used to call that mass hysteria. And it's a literature that goes back about 300 years. And whenever you... Okay. It might be time for an update on it. I don't know it specifically. I'm just saying 300 years old. A lot of things have changed. I'm just saying. You introduce... Often when you introduce social confusion, you can produce a psychogenic epidemic, especially among 
generally like it makes sense that like there is a social aspect of it now and some people um there like dude when i was in high school it was cool to be bisexual or over identify with music and now it seems like there's a level of like that happening with people identifying as non-binary for for sure like i i think that i don't think that everybody who identifies as non-binary is like we'll say for lack of a better term misdiagnosing I do think it's a conversation to have because if you look at places like California, there seems to be a ton of young kids identifying as non-binary. You look at other places like Alabama, you see that like nobody is. And then, but then that's an argument of like, okay, people in Alabama don't feel comfortable at all to identify, even if they do want to. But then maybe in California, people feel too compelled to identify, even as a, a to, to misdiagnose some other issue that they have, possibly because they have like some kind of a bit poor relationship with social media or their parents. Um, but there's a middle ground there. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, it's more about not allow like it's more about tightening the regulations on uh therapists that would diagnose these things. You know what I'm saying? Because like if a kid comes to you and says, "I have gender dysphoria." You need to be able to properly explore that because they may not. You know? Or the kids might be going online saying this is how I feel, and like they might be reading WebMD articles. Like there's to- there's so much like a middle ground. But at the end of the day, you need uh, parents and, and therapists and, and doctors to be able to like suss out like who's being honest and who's not being honest because there are people who are trying like they exist. I don't know what to tell you. Like they do exist. You know what I'm saying? So, but I don't think Elliot Page is the problem here at all. Really, it's adolescent females who are most susceptible to it. So I thought, oh, well, what's going to happen is we'll produce a psychogenic epidemic of gender dysphoria among adolescent females. And that is exactly what's happened. And it is. It used to be males, apparently. Like uh, trans women used to be more popular. Now it's trans, I guess, men. Biological men used to have like trans identity more than biological women. I'm only saying that for context. And now it's like the opposite, apparently. The fact that we freed up people who are, what, in doubt about their identity to be who they are. It's, it's so funny because like kids in general are still exploring their identity. Somebody said something, it was Stardust, it's something very interesting to me. They're like, um, when a girl hits puberty, even guys too, like it's just confusing in general. You have all these hyped up uh, hormones and emotions and uh, I guess especially for women, your boobs start to grow and shit and you're like, oh, I'm uncomfortable in general. You get uncomfortable with getting a lot of sexual attention as a, as a child, which is disgusting uh, because you're starting to develop. And like, it's possible that kids are experiencing puberty and misdiagnosing that uncomfortableness as like having some kind of like trans identity. Right, it's so possible. We should talk about it, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that everything's a problem. We just need to figure out how to get this collected in the right way. The problem is you have two sides; they're so hyperbolic, either over affirming or not affirming at all, and like that's the problem. That may have happened in a tiny minority of cases. It's absolutely and definitely the case that we've doomed thousands of kids to brutal, mutilating surgery and premature sterility, and we've done that on the altar of our hypothetical moral virtue and compassion. Look, I read a corporate analysis of the trans surgery industry last week. Growth rate projection for you lefty types and your anti-corporatism. Growth rate projection, 15% per year. Invest oh. now a $350 million business. As of- what am I investing in? Do you have to tell me? Of 2022, projected to expand to $750 million by 2027. Wow. No moral hazard there. There's plenty of moral hazard what, there. What and percentage? that surgery is absolutely brutal. Well, what is that surgery? Because a lot of, like, I mean, it could be like top surgery, bottom surgery. There's so many different surgeries uh, that could pen- potentially exist. I'm assuming he's talking about, like, what is it called, mastectomy, having your boobies cut off? For sure, man. I think that we, have, <laughs> yeah, up here is woke moralist. We definitely need to have the conversation because I, that's one of the reasons why I'm really uncomfortable with kids going through, like, those types of surgeries. Because what if it is part of, like, a social sphere? I'm not saying all of them are, but what if? Maybe there is. And, like, because I know in general, remove transness from it. Being in high school and middle school is so toxic. And like, I remember leaving it, going into college, boom, instantly, like a, 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 a blanket, like a weighted blanket was lifted off of you. Uh, it becomes drastically less stressful, <clears throat> you know? So, what percentage of the population do you think, uh, in your conception of how this is unfolding, what percentage of the population do you think is going to end up being trans at the end of this? Do you think like it one day it's going to be like it. 70% we know, of the we know country is trans? That, well, we know already that about one in five adolescents now identifies to use that hated word identifies as part of the hypothetical lgbtq that's just not true he, he's objectively incorrect in california they do like i believe um the statistics are one in five in california right it's not one in five it's like one in five in california identifies to use that hate well we know already that about one in five adolescents now I- 
identifies, to use that hated word, as what? identifies as part of the hypothetical LGBTQ plus community. Okay, well, that's not a hypothetical. Like, let's just talk about, like, even if you disagree with transness, um... One in five, like, like being, being, uh, sorry, being gay is like totally different from being trans. Like, let's just be honest here. All right, let me see. Oh, of course, the thing I look up is, is something that like is locked behind a paywall. Uh, so it looks like the, the, it's one in six. Uh, let me see if I can find this. Let's see. Queer students. Maybe he's closer than I thought. It says one in six though. Um, let's see. Oh, this is like a. This is like a weird thing. I'm trying to find this. Um, let's see. Let's see. All right, LGBTQ youth in the United States. Okay, I think this is this is from 2020, but I think that's reasonable. Yeah. Let's see. Um, do we have like a percentage? Is there a percentage? This is like, uh, what? what is, what are these numbers? Dude, these are like horrible statistics. Um... It's a lot more people just identifying as like non heterosexual. Like that's where it seems to be most of them. Um that's the pro see, this is like one of the problems with like conflating trans people with gay people. It's like I would expect people to be identify as as less straight now that it's more comfortable to do so. Like I feel like everybody's on like a, a general spectrum of se like sexuality. Remove transness from this. Like here's your thing. Here's like your your uh, your gay straight uh, well you know what versus this is your this is your gay straight spectrum right so you got your straight here um, you got your gay here right so like here's what we'll say like right here is like bisexual right here so I feel like everybody's on the spectrum and societal like the based on like how you were raised will will slightly change like so for instance I think like I think that I'm like here right. I think that I'm, I'm probably like in this range. And so for everybody, I think this is like biological. I'll say biological. I don't know how to say it. But based on my social conditioning, I could be anywhere from like here to here. It looks like a nipple. <laughs> so if I was raised in a little bit more of a conservative setting, I'd probably have less gay thoughts. And, you know, if I if I was raised a little more progressively, I would have like more gay thoughts, right? And there's some stuff. There's some, you know, I, sometimes, sometimes femboys aren't so bad. I don't think that like unless you get some kind of like incredibly insanely high social conditioning, I don't think that it could shift outside this. Like, if you go to jail, I could see that, like, this shifting all the way, like, down here. Because, like, if you might be in an environment where, like, the only sexual availability of was other men, right? Is with other men, right? And I think that this is where most people lie. So, like, now that it's more acceptable to be gay, like, it's probably, you're probably going to see people, like, shift a little bit more towards, like, the gay area that are straight. Like, it's not going to be that big of a deal. Though. Like, who fucking cares? At the end of the day, like, you would consider somebody over here, like, heteroflexible more in that. Like, let's say it's over here. This would be, like, heteroflexible where it's like, yeah, I'm mostly straight. Um, but I could fuck a dude sometimes. You know what I mean? And I don't think that's a big deal. The problem is, is that we're conflating. Like, the L, G, and B are completely separate from the T plus, you know what I'm saying? Like these, these there's the, everything else is like everything to the right of the B is not really like, this is all sexuality. This is like your, what, what, how, who do you want to fuck for the most part? The T is not. So that's how you identify. And yeah, there's some other stuff like pansexual that would be in this category, but it's like pansexual is mostly just like, you know, it's just who you want to fuck. Right. So like there's, there's basically who you want to fuck and who are you? Those are two different things. So it's hard to conflate those two. Cause if you say like there's 20, 20% 20 of, of people are identifying as, as LGBTQ. Well, what the fuck is that? Does that mean that they're like, yeah, I would suck a dick. Like, what does it mean? Because really what it comes down to it, um, like the, the, the studies from what I understand is that they're, they're measuring people who say that they're not straight, not people who say that they're like gay, you know? So how do they measure that? If you ask me like, Hey, well, would you suck a penis? Yeah. I'd be like, all right, he's not straight. Boom. I'm, I'm one of the 20%. You know what I mean?
So it's one in five. I don't know what the upper limit is. There's a consulting group in the UK now that's claiming there's 150 different genders. What? There's actually, Ooh. I suppose. I'd say that there's like three. You know, there's a uh, boy, girl, weird. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> like, who gives a fuck? I don't give a shit. Seven billion different genders, if you want to get technical about it, because everybody's temperament differs. But Oh, well, Jordan, that's so trans-affirming, brother. What did, he, what did he say? Actually, I suppose seven billion different genders, if you want to get technical about it, because every- Whoa, Jordan, there's seven billion genders? Dude, fucking based. Holy shit. Jordan Peterson says there's seven billion different Everybody's genders. Everybody's temperament differs. But I don't know what the upper limit is. And I have no idea. Obviously, we make very like generalized like categorizations here, you know. Like, there's no reason to have any more than like three to my, in my or or like sexuality. So, for instance, there's no reason to have any more than three. Gay, straight, bi. It doesn't matter like how like when I I brought up this uh, the spectrum before where it was like you know we had our gays and our straights and whatever who cares uh, and then you have your bi like okay this is a sexuality here this is a sexuality here like every blip here but we don't need to understand that we don't need to uh, as a as a general. A statement understand the hyper specifics of your sexuality it's it's annoying and boring you're gay straight by whatever who cares you like to fuck who you fuck same thing with like gender so it's like okay you're a man you're uh, a woman and then like you're like non-binary like is something here different than something here sure but who fucking cares you don't we don't need to get hyper specific we're just making general terms it doesn't matter you know what the upper limit is for this surgical intervention we'll see doesn't but that... i don't find it I, I don't find it the least bit acceptable and if you think Why? that your compassion is demanding that you extend your uh, pity to the LGBTQ plus community at the cost the of fireworks. sterilizing children, you should think again. You're on the wrong. Well, you you wouldn't give. Uh, he's talking about hormone blockers. You wouldn't give hormone blockers to a gay person. I'm just letting you know. Side of this, and not Wait, in a trivial on. way. Don't uh, I? I would appreciate it if you don't ascribe beliefs to me that I don't have. Remember, my original question was well, about. Well, you said earlier in well, this I said, question. That, I said that you Elliot were, Page is an adult, and so do you think that he has the right to yeah, transition? Yeah, but the, that was the original. You made question. some comments after that. Yeah, but as a star mm -hmm. and a public figure and a model for emulation, mm -hmm. she also has the responsibility not to entice confused adolescents into a catastrophic decision. Before Listen, I agree. If Elliot Page was saying, this is incredible, all you kids out there should go and get your boobies cut off and give them to your parents for a Christmas gift, I would say Elliot Page is being very, very not good. The thing is, is Elliot Page is just saying, I'm happy. Jesus Christ, the fucking fireworks. So it's a little bit different. You know? Before they have the maturity to make that decision. I just have to say, Jordan, I think it's a little bit of a moral panic. I just don't see some sort of, uh, you know, frenzy okay, of what people would you wanting consider, to become trans. What, first of all, that's a hell of a way to put it. What, Why don't you that, take a look at the increase in, in surgical uh, interventions and see what you think? I mean, how many do you think well, is too many? How again, many wait, look, the, if we're talking about I'll, I'll answer your question. I'll answer your question. The argument is it, it used to be very repressed because that's very outside of the tradition and the norm and the standard. And then now we what sort of let the be, boot off the neck a little bit. Suppressed? What you like people's ability to identify as trans used to be very uh, suppressed. Used to be suppressed all the, exactly. as the entire LGBTQ community. I mean, it was very recently. Okay, we first even got of all, they're not in the a, United States. First of all, they're not a community. These fireworks that are going on outside my house are for you, Jordan. They're celebrating your your heroism. Listen, you can be transphobic and homophobic all you want. Anybody out there, you have my blessing. I'm just kidding. I don't, you don't have my blessing, but you do you. But to make the claim that, that it's not a community, it needs to show you that there is a motivation from Jordan Peterson here that is, that is a very bad faith, that is very disingenuous. There's quite literally a community of people. Identities have community. There's a community of fat people. Right? It's myself, Tipster, Review Tech USA, um, jo Jordy Jordan, <laughs> maybe Boogie. He's not so good, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a community for. There's a community of bald guys. They're called bikers. There's communities all over. There's a community. Now, does everybody want to be like a really hyper specific part? No. But that's like a general thing. Like you have the black community, the white community, you got the gay community, you know, you got the, uh, the Asian community, you got the, um, I personally, you know, I enjoy the buffet community. I go there every once in a while. That's it. Well, you understand what is the point this community? I'm no, I'm. It's a community of like gay and trans people. I don't know. Wouldn't it be cool if we didn't have an LGBTQ, et cetera, and it was just the GT community, gay and trans? Check it out. Then you would be like a, like I would be like Papa Gut. 
Papa. Gut. GT, right? It would be like Dragon Ball GT. How cool would that be, huh? That would be cool. Look. No, actually, neither I understand it nor you, and that's why we're delving into it. <laughs> what? First of all, they're not a community. What? It's Jordan, come on. That's just a catchphrase. It's a buzzword. And I'll tell you something else, that almost <laughs> all the kids who are undergoing surgical intervention, the clinical literature is absolutely clear on this. 80% okay. of kids with gender dysphoria identify as homosexual when they mature. Um, what does that mean? Okay, so I'm looking into this, and I don't know what he's saying. So there's two interpretations. One is that 80% of the kids who are, go through gender-affirming care, they later find out, they detransition, it turns out they're just gay. Or maybe they go through the gender-affirming care, they're still happy with their gender, but then they also happen to be gay as well. Um, let's see, I'm going to read this. Follow up with gender identity disorder. Okay, it's a little bit dated, but... Uh, the study reports follow-up data on largest sample of data boys of boys clinic referred for gender dysphoria. With regards to gender identity and sexual orientation in childhood, the boys were uh, assessed at a mean age. Oh, this isn't... No, no, what he's... Oh, no, no, I know what he's talking about now. ...of kids with gender dysphoria. No, 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 no. Okay, so here's my understanding. We're going to read this. Is that gen the, the gender identity disorder was like overly prescribed and wasn't really treated at all? And then, like, the people ended up, like, detransitioning after they were just prescribed. This comes from, like, an ignorance in, in people, I believe, to not really know what the fuck gay means. Because um, this is, this is like, a 20... This is a study from 20 years old. Transness, even now, I don't think is studied very well. So why would you expect it to be... This starts in 1989. No, it starts before. That's the mean age. It's a rude age. So he... This is not the same thing. Gender identity, gender identity sort of is, like, over, was overprescribed. Uh, okay, the boys were assessed at a mean age of seven, seven years old, seven and a half years old. Uh, followed up at twenty one, so they followed. They started around seven. They followed up around twenty. Uh, the boys met the DSM three for gender identity disorder. The remaining for the boys were so threshold at the following up gender disorder. It was just multiple times for specifically classified. Sexual orientation was asserted for both fantasy and behavior. And persistence. Okay. Um. Yeah, okay. So this is basically this is basically um Okay, so that's the thing. This was over-identified. Okay, like I said, gender identity disorder was like over-prescribed for kids, and they're talking about starting like before the 1990s where we had like absolutely no idea about like gender dysphoria at all. Times have changed and gotten better, right? Now, this is still a good conversation to bring up as like, hey, we've been getting it wrong for for quite a few years, so we should be careful about our diagnoses. But this isn't this is not objective fact. This is like a really dated study of uh what like what we thought people who were trans were back in like the 80s. This is not the same thing. Um or 90s, early 90s, late 80s. This is not the same thing. We're in 2022. That's 40 years. 30 years. Let's do 30 years. That's a big difference. We've changed a lot in 30 years. We've gotten like a lot more intelligent when it comes to mental health issues. So this is like a really dishonest. I think he believes this. Um, Identify as homosexual when they mature. 80%. And that means the vast majority of people who are being converted surgically are gay. Um, now, no. how is that an advantage to the gay community precisely? No. See, I'm not, I'm not taking a position in any way, shape, or form on the kids because i don't know the well, first you thing about this to comment on the kids well but see that's why we're having this conversation though is because my original question was about kids. the adults and what your take is on the adults hmm. and it sounds to me like let me ask you this, would you ban transition surgery for well that's fair like he's just saying like if we remove kids from the conversation which is fair that's again that's like okay let's wait that's fine but he's like, these we're talking about grown adults so if if here's the thing let's say okay this is let's say we decided like okay we're talking about adults now. If you want to have a conversation about kids and how it could be like a little uh, difficult to, to prescribe it correctly, I'm 100% down on that, that. But like you have your zero to 18, right? So what they're saying here is the statistic that we just read was that at around seven years old is when they were diagnosed with gender identity disorder, which we already know isn't the same thing as gender dysphoria. And they were retested again at like around 20 years old, right? And 80% of them 
were just gay. Well, that means that that's still 20% of them were not just gay and they actually had a valid identity based on this control group. Since we're only talking about adults getting surgeries, that means that like moving forward, that we would only, by his logic, have gotten it correct on these 20% of people. And those are the 20% that are starting to transition after they hit the age of 18. And just so you know that it was a follow-up at 20. It doesn't mean that that's when everything shifted. So they could have been found out they're gay at like 17 or whatever. We don't really know. But again, nobody was prescribed. They were a diagnosed gender identity disorder. To me, that just means that they misdiagnosed these people. They're like, yeah, we, we they, they just did a bad job, okay? For adults. I don't know. Really? Really? Okay. Yeah, really. We're paying a big price for it. And I well, think that I think that it was price? um it was a, an act of stunning hubris to conduct the first trans surgery procedure. But why? And it's not obvious to me at all that it's been a net social good. And but so aren't there some people that are obviously trans who were born in one body, they feel like they're in the other body, and when they're an adult, they can make the decision. And then even from just a freedom and liberty perspective, shouldn't they have that right? Even if they do it and then they regret it, shouldn't they have the right to try it? It's a good question. I mean, it's a tricky one, right? Because I say yes, they do have the right. Yeah, as long as they get a, as long as they, you know, diagnosis, all that stuff. There's yeah. all sorts of surgical enhancement procedures that are obviously, it's not obviously appropriate to make them illegal. And I don't know exactly where the cutoff line is, so to speak. And that's partly why we're having a public discussion about it. But uh, this, this, this entire argument in many ways is stated so idiotically that it almost defies description. I mean, what do you mean, feel like you're in the wrong body? Well, what kind of measurement is that? No, hang on a sec. I was there are you. rules <laughs> for these sorts of diagnostic decisions. Mm -hmm. Okay. The rule is that you have to make a valid and reliable diagnosis. Okay. That's if you're diagnosing depression or anxiety or obsessive compulsive disorder or cancer or anything like that. There okay. are standards that you have to abide by. Okay. So just fundamentally, all those are how you feel, right? So like, this is one of the problems with like mental health is that you can't necessarily like objectively measure all these things perfectly, right? I'm sure that some of them have means, but like, how do you measure OCD? The person will usually tell you. I have like an obsessive uh, compulsive behavior. Like for instance, for me, um, like I make sure my doors are locked constantly throughout the night. I walk from the front to the back door, walk to the back door. When I'm more stressed, this happens more. And then eventually, I have to say like I know they're locked. I have to because I, I I walk I'll walk there and be like I locked this, I touched it, but I have to go back to the other door and I have to make sure. And it, it's a little frustrating, right? So like, what are you gonna do? Like, okay, so do you basically what are you gonna? You, that's what I'm telling you. I have it, and then I would meet other criteria. I would say like I have this as well. I have this as well. But why I have this or this? Right. That's the same thing for gender for, for gender dysphoria. Right. Um, now, we should definitely got to get our shit together on the proper criteria that we're measuring, of course. But like all these things are, I guess, to an extent, abstract. Right. So if you're saying that you can't be trans, well, I don't know. let's see what he has to say. Mm. In order to make a diagnosis, in order to fulfill the obligations of your professional college, if someone comes to you and says, I feel like I have lung cancer. That is not sufficient grounds upon which to formulate a diagnosis, much less. No, but lung, cancer is a physical ailment. Okay, I know where he's going here. He's just saying, you don't have a penis, you can't be a boy. Proceed to surgery. Mm -hmm. And so the question is, what do you mean by feel? What is that? Is that? All right, here's, here's, oh. here's, what, here's what, like, one of the things that sold me on, on transness, okay? I'm going to do this little thing. Follow me here, conservative. You cuck. All right, so let's do a gender spectrum. And let's do a sex spectrum, right? Right, the top one is going to be our, our gender spectrum and our bottom one is going to be our sex spectrum. Now on the sex spectrum here is going to be like lesbian porn, gay porn. I'm just kidding. Now we know something called intersex and the existence of intersex, just, just hear me out. So on the spectrum of sex, you have male and female as your general categories, right? There are different sex characteristics that like you would be like somewhere in the middle here, maybe a little bit more, blah, blah, blah. But for the most part, like even if a woman falls here with some sex, like you, they're, they're a woman, right? But then you have like intersex. So you're born with usually, um, you know, kind of both of those things. I don't think there's anybody that's been born with a penis, vagina, everything works that they, they can reproduce with themselves. But then you have intersex and there's usually like pseudo male intersex sex to pseudo female intersex where you have like maybe a penis and balls and I guess ovaries or something like that. Basically like that. We know that there's like a biological, genetical, blah, 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 thing that this happens. But we generally have like the parents choose a sex. Now, how does that relate to here? I would argue that we have the same thing here. We have the male and we have female. The difference is, is that instead of something being like a body, this is for your body. Sex is for your body. You have something in your mind, probably from birth, that causes you to have a discomfort with your body. But you basically have like intersex of the brain. That's how I would interpret it.
The thing is, is like you can't there's you can't just diagnose that when a baby's born because they don't fucking know dick where the shit. It's as they grow up and their different hormones conflict and these different things are seen within them and all these nuanced factors that most of us don't even understand. That's where it comes into like some kind of intersect. We'll call it like transness. That's what's like, oh, and then you have a spectrum of like transness. That's it. Like I would it's probably something that you're born with. There's probably a level of social conditioning there as well. It's it's impossible to figure out exactly what is what. You know, but this is how I look at it. And I think that this makes sense. You have you have intersex of the body, which is intersex, and then intersex of the mind, which is like your transness. And then you'd be like, okay, well, how does what feel? Oh, well, I feel like killing myself because my tits are growing. It's like, okay, maybe this part may well shit. Well, maybe. If you if you want to kill yourself because your tits are growing, maybe we should fucking see if we can help you out there. You know what I mean? That's where the conversation is. You know? That's where the conversation is. Okay? Is it an emotion? Is it a motivation? Well, is it a philosophical so, conclusion? What is it? Let, let, me explain, let me explain to you what I mean. Let me explain to you what I mean. So I've been doing my show for about a decade. And about mm -hmm. two or three years into doing my show, there were you know some stories here and there that I covered about the trans issue. Somebody who is trans reached out to me and explained to me in a very straightforward way. Yeah, look, I was born biologically female. I feel like I'm biologically male. My reality what does never that mean? lined up. Well, me, I'm just explaining what they said, and then you can respond however you'd like to respond. And they told me as soon as I got the surgery, changed the way I dressed, changed the way I appeared, I felt phenomenally better. And so that's why, at least for me, this was the answer. Now, I think it would be incredibly arrogant for me to say back to that person, no, you shouldn't do that, or I know better than you do for yourself. And that's not to say that every time somebody does this, it works out well, of course, because everybody's an individual. But in some yeah, instances, yeah. that's the answer. So, you know, me as a simple outsider, I just look at it and say, hey, whatever floats your boat, and if it works, it works. Look, most of the time, my attitude is you can go to hell in handbasket any way you choose if you're an adult. <laughs> now, the problem... So then why are you having a problem with adults transitioning? This problem is complicated and compounded by the fact of the necessity of medical involvement and the ethics on the medical front. So when you ask me about how that should be regulated, my... Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Ah, wait, 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 wait. Okay. No, 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 no. No. I, f I think no. Okay. Sorry. I'm having like a fucking a, ure a urethra moment. No, a eureka moment. Okay. Hold on a second. Because I think I caught Jordan in like some level of cognitive dissonance. Okay. Medical involvement and the ethics on the medical front. So when you ask me about how that should be regulated. All right. Maybe I'm, uh, maybe I'm not as quite as good. Uh, maybe I haven't like got it as quite, quite as much as I want. Okay. So I watched a little bit of this one as well. Or I watched a little bit of a clip that, jo that um, Kyle Klinsky and... and they were talking about, I saw a clip where they were talking about the morality of, of conversion therapy. And they talked about it very briefly. And what Jordan has said is he doesn't really know, he doesn't necessarily think that conversion therapy should be banned. Because what if somebody that's like gay, for instance, wants conversion therapy? Now, that's an ethical question that we can explore. The thing, I don't know if I can connect A to B. The thing is, is like, if you think that ethically somebody should be able like Jordan's logic is transitioning medically is bad, right? I would hope that we would understand that conversion therapy is bad. But if you think that somebody should be able to subject themselves to something that you might think is bad, then you can't have a problem. So if you don't think we should ban conversion therapy because you think even though conversion therapy is bad, a gay person should ethically be able to say, I want you to convert me, then you can't have a problem with a trans person. <laughs> engaging in a, a, a medical uh, thing that you consider bad because that's what they want. That's that's the, the line of logic that I would operate with. Now, I don't think that it's bad. The, re the reason I think it's bad to do conversion therapy is like it doesn't work and it's like it's really abusive. I don't think that you can convert somebody's gender or sexual identity or any of that unless you do incredibly intense social conditioning that would be like harmful to somebody, like a jail. When it comes to gender dysphoria and like getting treatments of, like surgeries and whatnot, you you can absolutely lift your dysphoria by going through these and like yeah they might be physically painful but like the outcome would be like mentally positive so it's like not that big of a deal like if i had a, if, if it made me feel better to go to the, the 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 to go with a surgery and get my boobs cut off and it made me feel better yeah i might be in pain for a couple of months but i'm gonna feel so much better head wise like it's not that big of a deal you know what i mean my answer was i'm not exactly sure about that yeah although it isn't obvious to me that the that it's obvious to me that the trans surgery enterprise has gone way too far, way too far. Thousands of okay. people too far. And I, well, why though? Like if people want it and it helps, then who cares? And I know people be like, it doesn't help. Suicidality is the same. 
again, we have this conversation every time. It's always necessary to talk about. You have to understand that when it comes to saying like, oh, the suicidality is the same after conversion uh, or after uh, gender affirming care, you have to understand that most people don't have access financially to fully full gender affirming care. So you say transition, but you're talking about like 1% or less of people actually having the $300,000 required to finish their surgery, right? It, so you can't really make that claim because it's, it's, it's not completely done. I imagine that people who finish their transition, look at like your, your Blair White's, your, your um, Caitlyn Jenner's, et cetera. They're probably very happy. They had the money to be able to like go through like these full surgeries, especially feminizing surgery is much more uh, expensive. So yeah, I, just, I, mean, I gotta qualify everything I say. It's incredible. I'm certain that it's harmed exponentially more people than it's helped certain by what metric? all right guys certain by what metric what you just saw was a teaser clip from my podcast with dr jordan peterson so you have to see the whole thing i don't but i might but that would have to do it off stream obviously all right yeah man listen jordan is i think kind of going down listen guys here's my thing i think jordan is going down the rabbit hole and i'm going to be honest with you i think ethan could have stopped it but instead of saying jordan come and talk about it he just completely removed all Jordan Peterson's videos. Now, did Ethan have to do it? No, of course not. But I think it would have been nice to have the discourse. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And another special shout out to all my Patreon and Twitch subs. If you'd like to support this channel further than you already have by just watching the video alone, go down to the links below where you can sub on my Patreon, which will allow you to get your name on this beautiful black wall. <laughs> uh, or you can go to the Twitch page and you can actually use a free Amazon Prime sub, if you have Amazon Prime, to subscribe. Thank you very much, guys. Take care.